Hello, my name is Irene. I am a Twitch streamer and a YouTube blogger, and today I'd like to show you a non-conventional way of streaming. Streaming with a MacBook. Today I will be taking you through the equipment, the hardware, software, and various tools that you will need in order to stream with a MacBook. And while we go through, I will let you know which items are optional and nice to have versus those that are higher priority so that you can have the full picture and then you can pick and choose which items are needed for your content and is within your budget. Additionally, I am always learning and looking for ways I can improve, so if you have any suggestions on how I can improve my setup, please leave a comment below. I will appreciate it. And I am all for knowledge share. I will also leave a link in the description below for all of the equipment that I'm mentioning in this video so that you can easily locate them. Great, so with that, let's get into the hardware and equipment that I use. First is the computer. It is a MacBook Pro 13 inch with an M1 chip. I have chosen the eight gigabyte unified memory. However, I would recommend the 16 gigabyte if you have the financial resources because I will say 90% of the time, if not 95% of the time, I have not ran into issues with this eight gig. However, there are five to 10% of the time, especially when I'm trying to edit more complex videos um, or trying to stream with a game and running other types of apps on my MacBook. There are times where I would have appreciated a larger unified memory. So eight gig, I think definitely works for you, but if you have the additional budget I, and I could go back in time, I would have chosen the 16 gig. In terms of the memory, I have the 256 gig SSD storage. This has not been an issue for me at all in terms of holding all of the applications and tools I need to stream and edit my YouTube content. And I think that's primarily because any video content I have in order to edit, I use external hard drives for that. And last thing is the M1 chip component. I got this MacBook less than one month after it came out in the market. And that definitely was a key concern, whether there would be limitations because of the M1 chip. From my experience, this is not an issue. Uh, all the softwares and tools needed for streaming are supported, especially now that it's been over half a year. There's some peripheral tools that I had to find workarounds for initially, but a lot of those have M1 chip versions now. So especially if it's now, streaming with an M1 chip MacBook is not an issue. As you can see on this computer though, there are only two ports in this entire computer. So for everything you do, you do need to use a dongle. And now let me pull out my handy dandy streaming box. This is what I use to store all of my equipment and lug it from place to place because I stream at different various locations of my home. This first item is the dongle or you can call it the MacBook Pro docking station. Amazon always has like 50 word titles for each item they sell when it comes to tech. Basically has all of the various ports that I need in order to stream. Before I purchased this, I drew out a diagram of my computer and all the various devices that would need to connect to it and made sure that all of the necessary items were included. The key items that I use on almost every stream it are the two USB 3 cables. One is dedicated to my DSLR camera. The second one is dedicated to either my overhead camera or if I'm streaming a gaming console such as the Nintendo Switch or the PS5. The SD card more so I use if I'm video editing. On the other side, I use the HDMI cable when I am um, plugging in my external monitor and I use this mouse connector to plug in my external mouse. This is where you would plug in your power for your MacBook. And lastly, this is the very important port to supply your internet because internet connection is super key when you are streaming. If you choose to go with a different brand, uh, that's totally fine. I found this one to be fairly reliable, 
but I recommend that you draw out a diagram of what you need to hook up into your computer and what items need to be ins and output signals of your computer so that you can get the docking station that will fit all of your needs. One thing I will mention is the ports are fairly close together. So if you have a device that is plugging in and taking a lot of space horizontally, um, it might start blocking up your space for your next port. So just keep that in mind as you purchase it. I did have the smaller version of this. It actually still has everything I need, but the issue I have with this one is that this one heats up a lot more quickly than this one. Make sure you have all the ports you need and also make sure it's reliable and powerful enough to be able to process all of that power and signals going to and from your computer because if it doesn't, it's not going to hold up for your stream. It is a very important device. <laughs> the next item is my camera. <laughs> the camera that I use is the Sony A6400. Now, let me say the SLR camera is completely optional. The only reason that I got a DSLR camera is because I got it for free. I do not recommend that streamers who are just starting out, including me, go out and purchase a camera because it is quite pricey. This one is still labeled as a cost efficient camera, but in my opinion, it's a lot of dollars and I don't think it's worth it. And especially if you're gonna be gaming, your icon is gonna be like this tiny, so it's really not worth it. I would focus and prioritize the other items I think streaming with your phone, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit as well, is completely sufficient and you won't have that much of a difference. And I use the A6400 with a kit lens. So this camera is really good at autofocus. It's fairly compact. The monitoring screen that can flip up is fairly robust. This is all metal, so I don't have to be worried that this is going to wear over time. And I think the camera displays aesthetically. So I think this is all great. The key issue that I have with this camera is that when I set the HDMI setting to be 1080p and 60 frames per second, once I connect the HDMI cable to the video capture device, which I use the Elgato Cam Link, which supports 4K, the camera automatically just overrides everything and decides to go in 4K mode, and it doesn't let you adjust it if you are in the video mode up here. 4K is totally fine, but there's two issues with that. One is that it does the 4K crop where it will kind of zoom, almost be like a zoomed in picture, and so a lot of your image peripheral image will be cut off so it's really difficult when you're trying to stream from a close-up location and two when it's 4k it's only in 30 frames per second so I can't change it to be 60 frames per second therefore uh, I'm streaming in 1080 30 frames per second with a cropped view there are some workarounds that people suggest where you can set this to manual or auto or anything other than video, which will avoid that 4K override. But the issue with that is that the autofocus is mostly fine when you're in the same location and you're not moving around. But if you're moving around a lot or your lighting changes, then the focus mechanism for those different settings, camera thinks that you're taking a picture and so it's not going to keep zooming in and out the way it would in a video. It just focuses as if it's like, did it, did it, did it, let's take a picture, which doesn't work for streaming. I stick to just setting it with video and trying to set up my camera as far away as possible. And oftentimes when I can't get it far away enough, I actually stream with it being vertical for my workout stream so that I can capture my head to toe. I think a workaround that other streamers have is that they've invested like 600 or so additional dollars in getting that additional lens, which can give you the ultra wide angle. But ultra wide, it's also kind of like a fish lens effect, which is also a cool effect if that's what you wanna go with. But I don't think having this DSLR camera is the top priority equipment that you need for streaming. So therefore, I have not yet made that purchase and I don't know if I'm gonna make that purchase because I found ways to make this setup work for me. There are some other components that you need in order to make this camera work. Number one is the power source. In order to make this camera be powered on, oops, I just broke off my nail. No! Focus on my left hand and do not look at my right hand. 
That sucks because I'm right-handed. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna have to try to do all my pointing with my left hand. This is the dummy battery, which will allow you to hook up your camera to an electrical outlet. And once you hook it up, there is this little hole over here to allow you to lock it down. The other item that you will need is, ta-da, a video capture device. You will need a video capture device in order to make sure the image that you're capturing with your camera is displayed on your computer. You cannot just plug in your micro HDMI cable to a HDMI straight into your laptop. I'm using the Elgato Cam Link. This has worked very well for me. It's been reliable. I have never run into a situation where my camera just chose not to show up on stream. It has been fully reliable for me and has not been an issue with the MacBook. You will need this and you will also need this which is the HDMI cable that plugs into your game capture card, as well as the other side that will plug into your camera. This goes right into the slot over here so that you can plug in the other end to your computer. Make sure this is plugged in to the USB 3 portion. If you plug in any of your USB 3 devices into your non-USB 3, aka the non-blue ports, it won't work. So, there we go, blue to blue, color matching, wonderful. The last accessory slash item you will need related to your camera is a tripod because it would be quite lovely if your camera could levitate, but it certainly can't, it's quite a heavy item, so you will need a handy dandy tripod. And this one, make sure you invest in a quality tripod. I learned the hard way that doing a good job with your tripod and making your camera stable is important. I broke my camera on my first stream. This is the tripod that I use from Vivitar. Obviously it has like the three step extendable leg. Helpful features on this is that sometimes you don't want to take up this much room. You don't want it to be taking over a diameter so large. The good thing about this is you can make it take up less space and tighten this so that it doesn't move. But I will say be very careful about how narrow you make the legs because as I, you might have heard from my whisper, yeah, that was not fun. That was, I cried <laughs> after my first stream. <laughs> I don't want you to have tears in your ears. Ears, not your ears. I don't want you to have tears in your eyes. So please, 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 please stabilize your camera. It's very important. It has several gauges to help you determine if you are level, so this one, helps determine if all three of my legs are level. On this side, to tell you if you are level this way or not. And the last thing that I find most helpful is that it is super easy to mount and unmount. Did you see that? That was a one swoosh move. <laughs> this is what I use when I need my camera vertical. My larger tripod cannot twist my camera to be vertical. So what I use is the Manfrotto Pixie. I know this is a pricey item, which is not what's needed for this because there is the Manfrotto Pixie Mini, which is used for DSLR cameras with a kit lens. The reason why I got it is because how my camera is standing for two hours is this way. And this is standing on my laundry machine, which has tile floors underneath. So if this tips over, by any chance, and decides to do a somersault onto the floor, that would be the end of this camera. I would rather spend and invest in a solid tripod that I can heavily rely on to hold the weight versus go with a smaller one where after wear and tear, it might do a somersault. In summary, your camera will be hooked to three themes when you stream. You will have your dummy battery hooked up to your electric port, you will have the base of your camera hooked up to some type of tripod, and most importantly, you will have the HDMI cable attached to your computer via the cam link. And that is your camera setup.
starting a month ago or so, Streamlabs OBS detects your iPhone as a video capture device through the USB 3 port. So if you're already spending a lot of money on your phone and you have a good one, I highly recommend just using your iPhone. If I had my current phone back when I started streaming and Streamlabs detected my phone as a video capture device, I probably wouldn't have even gotten a DSLR camera. Next is the items required to stream your gaming console. I have experienced streaming Nintendo Switch games as well as PS5 games. On Nintendo Switch, I have played Mario Kart, Super Smash, Among Us, Fit, Cardio Kickboxing. Oh, the Untitled Goose game. I'm not a huge gamer, so yes, I do play non like super techie games, but they're very fun nonetheless. And they have all worked great. And in terms of the PS5, I just recently started playing and I've played Spider-Man on two of my streams and those have gone very smooth as well. So what I use is the HD 60S Plus. This is important now. You do need the HD 60S Plus for use on the M1 chip MacBook. I originally got the HDS 60S without the plus because it's cheaper and I also thought it was supposed to work. If you do not get the S plus, the issue is that Streamlabs OBS will not detect your game capture card as a video capture device. In order to make Streamlabs identify it, there's a plugin that you need to download in order to make it detect it. However, that plugin at the time, which was six months ago, does not support an M1 chip MacBook. Therefore, you need the HDS 6 Plus. And in my opinion, using a lot of plugins and intermediaries just interferes and makes things more complex. So I would recommend just investing in this if you are gonna be gaming frequently from a console. So all you really need is this HDS 6 Plus and three cables. Let me take that back. Two cables, unless you'd like to display your game both on a monitor and your MacBook. A lot of the times I'm just looking at the gameplay on Streamlabs and when I'm playing PS5 I'm playing that from my sofa so I do plug in into my television as well that's what I'm watching while I'm playing oh I remember why I look at the OBS screen versus an external monitor when I'm streaming it's because that way your gameplay scene is right next to your chat so you can be a little more attentive to reading your chat and interacting while you're playing your game number one and number two if something is lagging you can automatically see that versus if your tv is displaying it fine and you'll never know so that's the reason why it's not because i'm lazy there's two sides to this there is a hdmi in and there is a hdmi out the hdmi in is the side where you're going to plug in a HDMI to HDMI cable. The first side will go into your game capture card and the other end will go into your gaming console. So this end will go into your Nintendo Switch, your PS5, all of your fancy gaming consoles that you have. You will also need a USB-C to USB-3 cable. And this will plug in your game capture card to your computer. If you would like to play your console games online, I do recommend that you use a ethernet connection. I tried playing Super Smash and Mario Kart and Among Us and Just Dance. So yeah, I guess there's a lot of games that require for you to be online to be streaming smoothly. I needed an ethernet cable. And so if you are trying to stream, you do need ethernet connection to both your computer as well as your console. And there usually are a limitation of ethernet ports in your house. And so you're gonna have to share. Everyone's gonna have to play nice in the sandbox and share. <laughs> in order to get that connection, you are going to need a metal weapon box. I'm just kidding. Um, but it really does feel like a weapon. Um, you will need this metal box, which is a ethernet network switch. This one's actually a network switch, but I'm using it like a LAN splitter because my upload speed is 100 gigs per second and so splitting it 50 50 still works fine so figure out your internet speed figure out what's right for you so this port over here is in so i would plug in my ethernet cable gray is connected to the wall white is going to connect 
to my computer. Blue is going to connect to the Nintendo Switch. In order to connect to the Nintendo Switch though, you are going to need an Ethernet to a USB 3 adapter. Okay, great. So this is how it is connected on the Nintendo Switch. I have this connected to the power, this one connected to the internet, and this one connected to my Elgato game capture card, which is connected to my computer through the USB 3 port. For the PS5, I would be doing the same exact thing, except this HDMI cable will connect to the back of my PS5. Additionally, if you would like your game to be displayed both on your computer as well as on an external monitor or your television. You would use this HDMI out port and just connect it to your TV. Okay, the camera and the game connection are out of the way. Those are the more complicated ones. These other accessories and tools are a little easier. So it will flow by faster. Number one accessory, and I think the most important accessory, is a mic. I highly recommend getting an external mic because the mic quality on your laptop or your camera will not be pleasant to the ears, to say the least. When I tried to use my camera mic, there was a lot of white noise. This one, the Razer Siren Mini, I got mainly because Harris Heller recommended it and I stand by it. I think this is a very portable, high quality mic. All of my streams are from this mic, so if you'd like to test what the audio quality is like, I do a lot of cooking streams. It picks up all of like the sizzling noises <laughs> like from when I'm cooking and like even when I'm eating, sometimes it sounds like ASMR. This is on the high priority list. Next is a ethernet cable. Um, unless you have crazy good Wi-Fi and you're the only person who uses it, which is not my case. I have pretty good internet speed. And even with that, the issue is wireless connection is not always a thousand percent reliable. 100% reliable. I have had streams where I like accidentally forgot to plug in the other side of my LAN port to the wall and it's worked, but there have been times where my stream crashed or the quality did not go through all the way. So make sure you plug in with the ethernet cable. Number three for your accessories is lighting. Unless the lighting at your filming location is already extraordinary, which is not the case at our apartment. Our windows face north, so even if we have windows, the sunlight doesn't do too much, especially when I'm in the inner room, such as my office area over here or my kitchen. And additionally, the colors of the light impacts things. The colors of the lights on our apartment are fairly yellow, and so it makes you look kind of yellow. You don't have as much control. You can do some white balance with your camera, but lighting still makes a difference. There is an art to lighting, I know. I'm not the best. Sometimes the lighting is just angled where it is because I just put it wherever it can fit. I have two lights. One is a larger ring light, which I take to all of my filming locations. Even though I'm on the patio, it helps sometimes because I'm backlit. So even when you have good lighting, if the lighting is not coming in the direction you need it and it's backlight, having lighting in front of you will rescue you being a black shadow. And then I also have this little light over here. Because at my desk, I can only angle my larger gigantic green light to my left. If I have this off, half of my face becomes very dark. Maybe this is moody, maybe this is good. I can't tell, I'm not very good at light art because I think multiple things can look good. But in any case, lighting is important. Not absolutely mandatory, but I think it's one of those where you can get more bang for your buck. The reason why I got lighting is I was so desperate. The first couple of streams, we took my husband's lamp from his room. He was kind of in darkness and angled it toward the kitchen so that I could get some type of lighting. Just because even with the camera, ISO and white balance, it was not very flattering. So I would highly recommend getting some type of lighting. It will make a difference. Ooh, okay, and then the last accessory is an extension cable. As you saw, we're plugging in a lot of items we need to plug in our light, we need to plug in our camera, we need to plug in our gaming console, we need to plug in our computer. If you're gonna have that LAN splitter, you need to power up your LAN splitter. 
sometimes I need to plug in my fan because it gets really hot during the summer. Make sure you have one of these because you're gonna have to plug in multiple devices. Okay, what other goodies do I have in here? Accessories. Oh yes, overhead camera setup. I use my iPhone as my overhead camera and in order to do so, you are going to need a USB 3 to an iPhone charger plug. If you're going to have an overhead camera and use your iPhone as that camera, I would highly recommend a super long cord because a lot of the times my overhead camera is used to help get to places um, that my main camera, I have a tough time lugging over with the tripod and all the millions of cords and cables that are connected. And when it's long, it also helps if you have certain types of materials. So think that through as well. Ooh, one other super important thing to think through is the size of your USB 3 plug. Do you see how this is the plug and outside of that, this metal casing is very narrow? That is very important because when you plug stuff into this dongle, your cam link will take up a lot of space. So when I plug this in and I plug in the next item, it needs to be very slick Otherwise, it will bump into this cam link. I've purchased and returned cords where this thing was too chonky. And that's the same scenario with my game capture card input as well. This fits, but just barely. It kind of pushes on it a little bit, so I have to be careful when I plug it in. Why is this so chonky? If you do not want to lug over a wire, there are wireless options to showing your iPhone as a camera, but for the majority of the apps that I ran into, some of them which are even paid that I purchased, they're, they haven't been too reliable for me. They're either cutting in or out, there's a lag, or they don't reliably show up as a video capture device. Okay, and we're down to our last hardware item, which is an external monitor. The screen on the MacBook Pro is fairly small, and also if you want to be showing different things, especially when I'm trying to share something, for example, where I'm looking through our Discord server and reacting to it, or I'm looking at YouTube videos, it helps for me to have an external monitor where I can display my OBS software Streamlabs and I can read chat more easily and then I can have those external items on my MacBook screen. So I highly recommend having a second monitor. If you do have a second monitor, you are going to need an HDMI connector, so keep that in mind. Okay, that is quite a lot of items we've gone through in terms of equipment and accessories. I just wanted to lay all of them out there to you so that you guys, again, can pick and choose but as you can see, a lot of these are optional. You do not need all of these on day one. I did not have these all on day one. You can certainly have add-ons to your stream as you go. I think that's part of the fun, showing improvements and growing with your channel. You don't need a camera from day one. You don't need a, you know, gaming con all of the gaming consoles in the world on day one. You can gain those as you go, and that's part of the fun, I think, in streaming. So do not feel pressured to get all of these. That's why I've marked the optional and highly recommended. And these days, I think there are definitely setups where you do not need to invest as many dollars because it can get very expensive very quickly. Okay, man, was that long, but I hope it was helpful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and I'd appreciate it if you could share with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to check out my Twitch streams to see how well these equipments are working in a live stream setting, I do have stream highlights in this channel, so please go check them out. I also have a VOD channel if you would like to check out past streams. And if you'd like to join for a live Twitch stream, it is every Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific and Saturday at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye!